Welcome to Side by Side, a podcast where I, Robert Kwong, take you inside conversations with artists, creatives, healers, and warriors taking the charge in their transformational story. Today's guest is Meredith Heller, the author of Writing by Heart and Write a Poem, Save Your Life, as well as several poetry collections. A poet, singer-songwriter, avid nature lover, and educator with degrees in writing and education. She leads writing workshops online and in person at schools, juvenile detention centers, women's prisons, and wellness retreats. In this conversation, we dive inside the origins and highlights of writing by heart, as well as Meredith's lifelong journey with creativity and self-expression as a healing force in her life. You can find more side-by-side episodes at sidebysidepodcast.podbean.com. And if you'd like to connect with me about my services, please visit www.robertquanhome.com. Hi, Meredith. It's so nice to connect with you when we, when I found out the opportunity to connect with you about your particular new book called Writing by Heart, A Poetry Path to Healing and Self-Discovery. I was so excited as a fellow writer and artist, and I like to use the word healer. It's so nice to have you in this space, and thank you for saying yes. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. I know you're a creative and interested in the healing path and the conversations, the depth, the inspiration that comes out of these kinds of meetings of hearts and minds and lives is so fulfilling. So thanks for having me. And, you know, this book is new. It's just come out into the world. So first, of course, congratulations, but also have you had a chance to celebrate yet or to com- to commemorate the release? It's such a great question. Thanks. You know, I, I did. I, it's funny. So <clears throat> this book actually just came out on February 27th, which was my 60th birthday. And it wasn't planned that way. At one point, my publisher wrote and said, we need to push the book a little bit further out. Is it okay if we release it on February 27th? And I said, considering that's my 60th birthday, it sounds perfect. And then this past Saturday, which is just a couple days ago for us right now, I did a book talk at probably like the best, the big, the biggest bookstore in Marin County, California, where I live, Book Passage. And that was really my celebration, both for the birth of the book yeah. and for my 60th, because it was such an incredible event. And so many people came out. I got a standing ovation and it was just such an amazing opportunity to share the story of how the book came out in, you know, in person, I got the audience involved. So yes, that was my celebration. Well, I, I love that celebrating with amongst the community, which is like so nice. And that's something that's really captured in the book, which I'm sure we'll get into. But, you know, a little bit about you for folks who don't know, you've been teaching and writing poetry for um, over 30 years. So if you know, whenever you mark the beginning of your writing journey, let's say, did you know back then that it was going to evolve into such a long and maybe like devoted companion, you in writing and poetry? Oh, God, such a great question. Thank you. I could just sit with that question for a year. Yeah. <laughs> because... <laughs> That's the hour, folks. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I started writing when I was about five. I started writing short stories. And um, I think it was a way of making sense of the world, of filling up things I didn't have. Like I had a whole imaginary family of brothers and sisters, and I wrote stories about them. I did have a sister, but I guess one wasn't enough. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so I started writing then. Um, But... What really got me writing, I left home when I was 12, 13 years old and Mm. raised myself 
living in the woods along the Potomac River in Maryland, um, outside of Washington, D.C. I came from a dysfunctional family and I left um, kind of to save my soul. Yeah. And um, I lived by myself in the woods, in domes that I built, in abandoned houses and in barns, old barns. And um, I was very alone and uh, I had a lot of trauma. I was had a lot of depression and all of my friends were dying of suicide and drug overdose and I wasn't far behind them. And poetry found me. I'm also a singer songwriter. Poetry and music found me. And I would get the first line of poetry or song, both lyrics and melody in my left ear, like a lifeline, like a work permit that said, stay here, find the words and the melody to hold and shape and name the loss and the longing so that there's a way to be in relationship with what is so overwhelming, especially at that age with absolutely no support. And to be able to hold it in a way that brings understanding, clarity, making meaning, and even perhaps beauty. Uh, so at that age, working totally out of survival and some, you know, angel muse who wanted me to stay on the planet. No, I had no idea that it would become my passion, my path, my purpose, what I came here to share with other people to help inspire and open the door and express and heal. Hmm. Thank you for sharing some of your origin story, I like to say, for writers. It's just like such a catalyst when I kind of read a little bit glimpse of your story, which I think probably just conveys a fraction of what that moment must have been like, highs and lows, let's say, right? Absolutely. Um, and you describe poetry. I love this personally. You started off the book with saying poetry is a form of expressive writing. I was like, that's perfect. I love that, yeah. that expressive yeah writing because i think people perhaps who you know aren't big writers don't identify as such they might think like we go about our everyday life talking telling you know giving our opinions we are expressing ourselves why would it be so important for you to express yourself by putting pen to paper specifically mm, god so beautiful yeah two thanks so much for for um, bringing both of those aspects up. These days, I'm really using poetry as this umbrella term to hold space for yeah. doing this kind of personal, self-reflective, expressive writing. Because sometimes the word poetry intimidates people. And <laughs> if you follow along with the book or you come to workshop, um, <clears throat> all forms of writing are welcome. Poetry, prose, mind spill, heart spill, song lyrics, make up your own form, just write. And the kind of writing we're doing is this. What is bubbling up here right now in my belly, in my heart? And how can I give it my attention with kindness, curiosity, courage, and then write about what I discover. And when our writing really becomes alive is when we start to write things and learn things we didn't know we knew, but we do. And that's what keeps bringing us back to the writing. Becomes, it becomes this mirror through which we see and feel and know ourselves more deeply and a place where we can be totally honest. And that's not always true in our lives. You know, we can't always be totally honest in every situation with everybody, but we can with ourselves in our writing. Even if you have to burn what you wrote or rip it up, mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. you are making a friendship and almost like a covenant with yourself in this place that becomes refuge and temple and friendship 
where you show up with yourself in full honesty, whether you're feeling great or whether you're feeling awful, all of you is welcome. Your sorrow, your depression, your lethargy, your hot mess, your loss, <laughs> your longing, and your bravery, your beauty, your brilliance, your desire, your love, all of you is welcome. When we make room and express the all of ourselves is when we become whole. This is how we heal. I have to say hearing that description is so powerful because, um, you know, my background as a writer was sort of like I was taught, well, you know, in order to be a good writer, you're going to want to think about education, which is important. And then you go to school and I was in a bunch of environments and I, you know, you have experience there, you know what I'm saying. And um, I never learned writing as a practice of self-care, as a practice of presence mirror yeah up against yourself and how that's super important and both for whether it's like career if you want to make it about that for your relationships just for your own well-being but truthfully you know I just want to say I don't think I was taught that like it's like I didn't understand what that really looked like until I had been writing you know scripts and whatever for quite a few times and I just stumbled it was like I need to write to get it out you know, there was a moment where I had no other motivation except I need to do it. Does that make sense? Does that? Oh, it so makes sense. And I love that. And that goes back to what we were talking about before about that need. Yeah. You know, getting in touch with that place in ourself where we are so moved by something in ourselves or in life, whether it's good or bad, but that we can no longer hold it inside. And there is this urge to express, to spill open into yeah. expression. You know, this creative impulse is is so powerful and, and I really think so natural to us as living beings. And yet, like you're saying, uh, so many people come to me and say, oh my God, I haven't been able to write since junior high or high school or college mm-hmm. because it had to be a specific way. I was writing for someone else. It had to be, be whatever perfect means. And, and we lose touch with writing to feed our souls, writing to commune and to be in intimate relationship with how we are moved by life or what we're going through or what we're feeling or what's coming up or what's going on from the glory to the chaos and every note in between, you know? Um, And so that's another piece with anybody who's working along with the book or who comes to my workshops, I always say, don't write for anybody out here. We already know you're brilliant, you're funny, you're deep, you're wonderful. We already know that. The hardest part is getting you, the writer, to fall in love with yourself and your experiences in such a way that you're willing to spend time and attention with them to make them into something that expresses how you feel. I love that this can be a craft or a practice of communion, maybe, and self-reflection, like you're saying. And at the same time, you can then take these little moments that maybe may or not, or may or may not have been significant in writing a poem, let's say, but you can start to act to actually connect with people, find others who also write. So I'm curious, before we get into how this particular book came about, do you remember when you first started sharing your writing and what your experience of that was? I'm assuming maybe you, you know, kept it for yourself in nature somewhat, but at some point you started sharing it with others. What was that like? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, So... For me, for so long, my writing and my songwriting 
really was my private refuge. And I didn't let anybody in. I didn't share that with anybody um, for a very long time. I think the first time I started sharing was I probably went to an open mic to a singer songwriter night and did that. Um, and it's very vulnerable and thrilling at the same time um, to say, this is who I am. And this is the deepest part of me. This is how I talk to myself. This is how I commune with whatever that life force is that is bigger than me, that comes through me. And I'm going to allow myself to be seen, to be witnessed. And I would play a song and people would come up to me crying and thanking me because they would say, I was able to speak what they felt, but couldn't, you know, find the words for. And I think mm -hmm. it was in that that I realized um, two things. One, it's an act of generosity to share what comes through us creatively. And also um, that perhaps it's not really mine. I mean, it is because it came through me and, mm -hmm. and everything of who I am or who you are shapes how it comes through. And yet it's bigger than any of us. And I think that's what I love so much about creative flow. Um, my whole life, it, I've had music, writing, and dance. And I'm always working in one or two, usually not all, all of them at once, but usually one or two. And for me, and I, I would imagine, or I would love to hear for you too, as a creative, yeah. when I'm in creative flow and it's really flowing, I am part of something that's bigger than my small self. And there's no separation. Like when I'm writing a poem, there's not me, the poet writing and the poem that is being written, there is simply the poeming. What, are, what about for you? Yeah, you know, I've, I've spoken about this topic because I feel like this is like the artists and um, let's say, and, you know, performers particularly, this is like a North Star that we talk about. How do you, when you've experienced being in the zone and getting into flow, how do you um, go back there. <laughs> That's just been a totally. conversation I've had with so many artists. And I, you know, I'll say this maybe as an example of my journey with creative expression. I felt very stuck and stagnant in my throat area. And it wasn't until I started seriously approaching writing and creative expression as a form of healing myself that I could start, for example, improvising at the piano. I mean, I had taken master classes and whatnot and it was just the mortified and just frozen paralysis and whatnot to go from that kid at 17 or 18 to where I am now. I think I'm still unraveling that mystery a little bit, but this is something that I told myself was not possible for me. I'm not an improviser. I don't know music like that. And maybe similarly writing, but I'm still working on reinv reinventing writing. But yeah, it's that opened me up that opened me up and I felt like I could finally find things that were for me, but also something that I could kind of like surrender afterwards. I'm not as precious as I used to be with, to me, they're just music improvisations. I suppose I take ownership in like playing some of it, but you know, like you said, I started, it, it kind of felt less personal, but in a really, really great way. Does that resonate with you? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, thanks for sharing that. I, I love hearing that. And I love hearing about other creatives experience with like what you just called the North Star and how do we get back there? You know, my I feel like my whole life has been about <clears throat> creating the kind of environment in myself mm -hmm. where I open that door. Or, or where the door opens. I mean, for so long, I think it was, for me, it was like, whoa, the door's open. I got to go through. But I had no idea how to open it at will. Mm -hmm. It would just suddenly be open. 
mm-hmm. of its own <laughs> openness. <laughs> and and so how to open it, you know? And um, and so I think that I've spent my whole life uh, working with that riddle yeah. um, still. And, but as you were talking, I really did relate to that because I was thinking about how in, in my book and when people come to workshop, I ask them to write with paper and pen rather than on the, on the keyboard for the, of their computer, because it really involves our body and our nervous system, heart, arms, hands. It's more like a dance. And, and we've been doing this bodies and DNA have been doing writing for much longer than we've been doing click clack on the keyboard. And I really think it pulls from us in a more organic way. Um, however, sometimes for fun and to loosen up what you were saying, like it's not as precious yeah, right. um, yeah, that was such a great way of saying that. I have an old vintage typewriter. I think it's like from the forties, oh, and cool. I mean, really old. Like it's not even electric. You know, all the keys get jammed up and everything. And sometimes I'll just sit down in the mornings and I'll type away whatever just complete heart spill, stream of consciousness, um, and I'm not as attached to it. Uh, as I am when I write by hand or edit, you know, on my laptop and, um, and the stuff that comes out is a different part of my listening inside a different way of relating to the world. And I know I'm going to make all kinds of mistakes in the typing because the keys get stuck and everything. And I just don't care. I'm just like, oh, wow, this is so fun. I wonder what's going to happen. So that's kind of how I improvise. Yeah. You know, in well, relation to you learning, making space for that. Yeah. No, it's true. I think I found myself having to think um, a lot about the relationship between my body and music in a way I've never had to before. And truth be told, when I was sort of, um, I guess, on the very hardcore, classically trained you know, teenager kind of who's going to be auditioning, I was actually pretty disconnected from my body. It was a very intellectual exercise at times for me. And, and then therefore kind of can affect performance and your experience of it at times. So that's a relatively new adjustment for me to even think of like writing and playing the piano as like, you know, approach it the same way as you would running or yoga or meditation or anything. Yeah. Yeah. And your book helps support that because at the end of every chapter, there's some kind of physical practice or a meditative practice that is kind of influenced by like the theme of the chapter. And I love that. So do you have any, um, some things that you've seen have worked for people to help prepare their body before they go into a writing practice? Yeah. Thanks for picking up on that part. Yeah. So in every section there's in the writing by heart, there's a subsection called body mindfulness. And what we do is we do this guided meditation or journey that helps you access the information from your body, from your felt experience, from your senses, from your imagination, from deep psyche. It's deep presencing with self. You know, we're all going a million miles an hour in the world out here. I think this turning toward ourselves and slowing down this more presencing with ourselves is really going to be um, the only thing that supports and saves our humanity with ourselves and, and this whole living organism of life, because the speed and the pace that's going on, it's, it's beyond it's not beyond. sustainable. <laughs> It's not sustainable for, for, for living beings. I, I agree yeah. with that. Um, yeah. So, so we, we do these different practices, um, presencing with a part of our body. There's a huge chapter. The biggest chapter in the book is called body language. Um, I was a body worker, a massage therapist who did a rehab with spinal cord injury patients for 27 years. That was my work, my livelihood. And what I learned 
after working with hundreds of thousands of bodies is that the body keeps and holds all the stories of our lives. And if we give it the invitation, it will teach us its language, its wisdom, the medicine it needs to heal if we listen and make an opening for it to speak to us instead of what we learn most of our lives, which is to tell our bodies what to do. What if we allow our bodies to tell us right. what they need, you know, like that. And so I guess that's a, a, met, a bigger metaphor for that whole section of body mindfulness, presencing to get the information that will then inform our writing from a deeper way. Like I always tell everybody in workshop, don't think your way there. Go inside and see what arises from body, from senses, from deep psyche, from muse. It will be far more interesting and far more fulfilling and way more surprising than thinking your way there. And that's another unlearning. We have to unlearn how to think our way there and actually experience what's here and take an interest, fall in love with it. Take an intro. You laid out so many glorious points that I think I was like, boy, if that was simple in practice, I, I would be, I think everyone would be thrilled because these are so fundamental. And yet I think they've, they can seem really complicated in the modern world. That's why you can follow along with the book or come to workshop because we just slow it all down. It's, yeah. it's, you know, you said something before about creativity being a practice. Mm -hmm. And that's another huge piece. I opened the whole book with that, that I had this yoga teacher who always said, this is not a yoga perfect. It's a yoga practice. And I, that hit home so hard that I made that my own. And I say to everybody in the book and in the workshops, this is not a writing perfect. It's a writing practice, yeah. you know, and the more we do it, the more fluent we become. Yeah. In slowing down, in showing up, in giving our attention to what's here with kindness, curiosity, courage. Yeah. Specifically, I love the kind of writing prompts and um, around the body. I've never done that specific practice, but I, as I was going through it, I was like, ooh, I just know if one follows through on that practice, especially as a group and share that would be quite the transformative experience. And, you know, you've had so much experience facilitating and holding space in that way for kids, for parents. And I saw, you know, in the little info sheet about your new book that this uh, book actually came out of some workshop um, journeys that started during the start of the pandemic. I believe you were actually teaching kids and it was actually the parents, mothers, women, who approach you and wanted to have you lead them. Can you share a little bit more about that experience and what happened? There? Yeah, thank you. So great. Uh, so I taught as a poet in the schools, specializing with teens for 30 years. And first in Boulder, Colorado, and then in Marin County, California, where I still live now. And I loved doing that. It was just so incredibly thrilling. I also taught at juvenile hall and worked with a lot of at-risk kids. And it's so fulfilling to help kids find the words and create poems that express what, what matters to them in their lives. I think it's very empowering. And then to watch them get up in front of their class of 30 or 40 kids with their hands and their voices shaking and be received and be celebrated and sit down as if they've grown wings. That to me was pure joy. And then the pandemic hit. And <laughs> all those classes and all that aliveness got smushed into my then 13 inch laptop screen with kids, you know, 30 and 40 kids in the class, their faces no bigger than a postage stamp. And it was really hard to keep their focus. And it was hard to keep my focus. And after a few years of five, six, six classes a day with 30 and 40 kids on Zoom, I burned out. The kids became Zoom zombies. 
and one of the I was specializing in in um, poet private poetry classes for teen girls for empowerment and self expression, and one of the mothers of one of the girls who came to those private poetry workshops asked if I would teach a workshop during COVID and quarantine for her and a few of her women friends. And I said, I don't know if I know enough to teach adult women. And she said, oh, Meredith, I've been sitting outside my daughter's door secretly for years, listening in on the workshops and doing the writing. I think you know enough. So, so much for confidentiality. But um, so I started the first women's workshop in October of 2020 with eight women from Marin County and the Bay Area. And we did elemental wisdom where we called on the power of the elements, earth, air, fire, water, to revitalize our lives when we were in so much isolation and chaos and disarray during quarantine. You know, I mean, God, it just ripped us apart. Who are we, you know, without our communities and our normal routines and socializing. So um, a community was born in that first workshop. And, And we met once a week for five weeks and that felt like a good rhythm. And that's what we've, I've continued. We meet once a week for five weeks throughout the entire year with two weeks off between each workshop to give people a breather mm. and to give me time to create the next series. And um, so after that first series of elemental wisdom, those women asked for another and they came back this time with their friends from all around the country. And so this what became the beauty of Zoom was that I have women from all over the country and a few women from around the world now who Zoom in with us from Egypt and Croatia and New Zealand and the Netherlands and England and Alaska and Nova Scotia and all across the United States. And we meet as small groups. We went from one cohort to two. We're now at five cohorts and growing and two really beautiful things happen in workshop that that we touched on just a little bit recently you and i in this conversation Mm -hmm. two really important things one when we share our work with others and we are witnessed and we hear other people's stories there's a commonality an awareness of commonality As human beings, we're not all that different from each other. We have the same needs and desires and longings and fears and dreams. So we learn that we're not alone. Paradoxically, we learn that our story is unique and that it matters. And the way that we contribute and weave and engage with the whole community, whether that's the community of the workshop or our family or our neighborhood or our town or our country or our planet. We matter, our voice, our particular unique story matters. And I think that's beautifully illustrated in the book because this is something I wanted to touch on for people who are interested in the book or just gotten it and haven't started, but it's a fusion of sorts. There is kind of a beautiful kind of um, creative expression as a healing journey, as healing medicine. There is, in fact, writing and materials about craft, in my opinion, but I think distilled in a way, like you said, that slows it down and back to the basics. But I would argue there's still craft that people consider from the book. And then on top of that, there are a collection of poetry within the book as well. So those are actually generated or they were born out of these spaces, correct? These poetry are from um, women and students in these cohorts? Oh, yes, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I love how you talk about the fusion. Thank you so much. That's such a beautiful way to frame that. Yeah, so uh, I was teaching the workshops since um, I started in October 2020. And then um, I had moved to the California desert for a year and I found out I'm not a cactus, I'm a fern, but I had <laughs> stayed in the desert for a year and I, it was hot and dry and lonely. And I looked at all the material 
from the workshops I'd been teaching. And I thought, God, these writing invitations are great. The women's poems are mind blowing, heartbreaking open, like, like change your life poems. And I thought I have to share this with the world. So, so the book came out of those workshops. Um, this book has 14 chapters and we're actually on workshop. We just started uh, workshop 22, which is called spark the muse. It just started last week. And we roll this way through the whole year, including the summer and the example poems in the book are from the women who have been and who continue to come to workshop and show up every week. I call them the women warrior poets. They are brave and beautiful and vulnerable and genuine. And they show up every week and dig deep to find their treasures, their treasures that revitalize their lives, their passion, their purpose. For these workshops, have you seen people come through your space who have, you know, had many years of experience writing and have gotten, like we had talked about before, are they also possibly next to someone who has maybe never to, been too afraid to pick up a pen next to somebody else with a different set of experiences? Is it a place where, uh, where all can gather or do you have a particular intention or theme? What can people expect? Yes, it's a, it's a place where all people can gather. New writers, seasoned writers, people who are very um, scared to write or share, who don't believe in themselves, who want to build that, other people who are more confident, but almost like your journey, like maybe people who have <clears throat> been trained as writers, but never found the relationship where they're feeding and nourishing themselves through the writing or find the freedom to um, be able to improvise or not need it to be whatever perfect means to explore and experiment what I like to call deep play, the mm -hmm. highest state of being. When we're not self-conscious, we're not attached to the outcome. We say yes to whatever arises, no matter how weird or wacky. Um, and we weave it in and we learn to trust our relationship with ourselves, our creativity, the life force. That's when it really starts getting exciting, I think. So yeah, everyone's welcome to workshop. And so far, so I teach for some other institutes like the Institute for Poetic Medicine and I teach at creativity summits and healing retreats. And there's a, there, in those, they are, there are co-ed classes. My workshops so far have just been for women. So I feel like I'm carrying forward this lineage of sacred circle for women. Yeah. Um, women have always met throughout history, the earliest history. Women have met in circle around the fire, around the well, um, around the kitchen table, around the river and shared our experiences um, from our elders to our youngers so that we learn from each other about this human journey. And I think that this is lacking in our society and our culture. And I think that we are at a loss for not having this. So I love holding space for women and um, so many more men now are writing to me saying, please, would you open um, either a workshop for men or a co-ed? So I will. I will. I think right after the book launch, which is, you know, everything right now, taking every right. waking second. But I think when that mellows out a little bit, I will open a co-ed cohort um, because there still are women who just want to have just a women's group, just like I'm sure there's men who would love to just have a men's group. Right. There's, there's a kind of bonding um, that happens. Um, but, but in general, everyone, everyone of any level and experience and any way of identifying yourself or not identifying yourself is welcome into this work. <laughs> 
Um, and so if they're interested to see what might be coming up for you or what sort of um, classes you're teaching at different um, institutions, where's the best place to connect with your work or to connect with you? Thank you. The best place to find out what I'm doing is my website, meredithheller.com. And the book, Writing by Heart, is everywhere on every bookseller platform. Just go to your favorite bookseller and get it. And get one for anybody you know who feels the call to write. Uh, what yeah. I say in this book is each page is a doorway. Open anywhere. Open any page and write yourself home. I love that practice of flipping a page of a book and seeing what it evokes first or what I am, you know, paying attention to first. That's such a good practice. And there's so many good exercises and tools and prompts and questions and invitations in the book that I think there's something for everybody who is on their writing journey. So thank you for doing the work you do. And, you know, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I have two other questions or invitations. Bring One, well, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you would like to express or, at, you know, kind of a, I see you as kind of a poet, writer, advocate of sorts, but if there's anything that you still like to say and kind of put on the table, I like to say that I haven't asked you yet. No, I think we covered so many interesting, deep and inspiring yeah. moments just, and I have to say, I think we were very improvisational, Yeah. right? I mean, yeah. I think improvisation is very natural to us as, as human beings, as living beings. Um, and I really think it's so braided with creativity. It's about getting out of the way and saying yes and trusting. And I think we really did that in our conversation. So, I mean, that's the hardest thing to talk about. And I think that we demonstrated it. Yeah, I hope so. That's the my approach for these conversations. And, um, and it's just, you know, it's kind of like the uh, just the right connection or the right partnership. It's such a wonderful experience. And, you know, some people just love these long form conversations, as do I. So thank you for being like a willing, playful participant in all of this. And again, just for having a space for writers to show up and know that they will be cared for, they will be regarded, and they will be seen, right? Mm. Um, yes. And the last thing i don't know if you have your book nearby or anything of yours that you like to read as a send-off absolutely this is called huntress of the holy sound i sat by the river and i listened to the water she was singing about forgiveness she was singing about hunger she was singing a song of sunlight as my body rolled under I asked the rocks and I asked the water what to do about my hunger while I chewed on rinds of anger by the mouth of the river. She sat down beside me, touched my skin with her finger. Shake out your bones, you wild creature. Shake out your bones, you wild dancer. Gather and empty your blood of what aches and the moon will make her honey in the dark from your mistakes. I sat by the river and I listened to the water and her waves washed me over like the hands of the mother. I came clean to her gospel. I came hard to her thunder and her waves washed me over as my body rolled under. Let go your worries, lay your body down here at the river where the earth is hallowed ground. Let go your worries, lay your body down. The gospel of the water will unwind what is bound. Light a flame for forgiveness, light a flame for truth. Claim your worthiness of love. Grow into your youth. Come home to the river, home 
to this sacred sound where the water sings your name in the secret language that you found. There are circles on the water playing prism with the light. There are rocks carved with faces who tell your fortune in the night. She will wrap you in her rapture, share her pockets, treasures deep. Your tears will turn to temples in the healing of her heat. She'll sing a song of forgiveness in a hard earned melody. Her music will absolve you of every wrongful deed. Whisper your prayers to the water. Moan your desire to the moon. Turn your wisdom into soil. Seeds to plant. Seeds to bloom. Well, I feel like, first of all, we could have another hour talking about not just reading poetry, but speaking the words, too, as a whole other practice or experience, because your delivery, yeah, and the way you used your voice, um, I, I will say, you know, I've often said, oh, I'm not a poet, I'm a writer, but like poetry is not my thing. This experience with you today, and also just when themes come up in my life in a recurring way, you know? expressive writing and writing poetry I think is something that I'm going to be a convert around so thank you <laughs> so happy and when I open the co-ed come on come to workshop <laughs> oh god we'd love to have you you're yeah. so open and beautiful yeah. I really love talking to you Robert thank you so much for having me pleasure is all mine I can't wait to put this together it was just so nice meeting you today so thank you thank you so much I loved our conversation yeah make sure to send me all the links and I'll post them all on my on all my places yeah yeah